time difference between Surabaya and Perth. Yeah, in Surabaya we are yeah one hour behind of Perth. Yeah, so I would like to welcome you in our guest lecture series. Yeah, this is number ten of series in this year. Yeah, this is organized by Department of Accounting. Faculty of Economics and Business, University of Airlangga in Surabaya. And today we have Associate Professor Shams Fasan from Karatin University as our speaker. And I'm Anart Nawati from the department as the moderator for this lecture today. Yeah, this is first time for Associate Professor Shams Fasan to share his knowledge with us in Uni Universitas Airlangga. So, Personally and also institutionally, I would like to express our high appreciation for his availability. Yeah. And then let me introduce a bit about our speaker today. And can I yeah, please share screen of mine first, Sam? Yep, yep. Yes. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, our guest lecture today, title is The Bright Side of the Common Ownership and the Evidence of Bank Transparency. And I will read a little bit about the yeah, Sam's short bio. Yeah. Dr. Sam Spathan is an Associate Professor of Finance at Curtin University, Perth, WA, Western Australia. Before joining to this university, Curtin, yeah, Shams was affiliated with the University of Queensland and he is one of the outstanding researcher and also teacher, yeah, lecturer yeah, that is proven by his achievement of getting the prestigious ARC, the Australian Research Council, Discovery, Discovery Early Career <laughs> Research <laughs> Award, yes, yeah, fellowship during the 2013 to 2016, when Shams was in the University of Queensland. And Shams research focus is on corporate governance in the banking industry. Yeah. And I put here is some selected publication of yeah, our speakers today. And I, yeah, I saw here from the list yeah, from Google Solar, yeah, I can count that yeah, Shams has three papers, articles, yeah, in Journal of Banking and Finance, and also two Journal of Corporate Finance, and also the last one, I think, is European Accounting Review. Yeah, they are in the ASTA ranking, right, Sam's? Yeah, yes. and many, yeah, many others, yeah, very, very many, yeah, tons of uh, other papers that, yeah, Publish in other respected yeah, journals. Yeah. And before we come to our main presentation of our guest lecture today, yeah, let me share, yeah, remind you all the rules yeah, during our lecture today. And this, yeah, the first one is the guest lecture is being recorded and live streamed. So I hope you are all yeah, give the consent about this. And the second one is, please stay mute until you are called and turn on your camera and use your virtual background that has been shared and also rename your name yeah, correctly according to your name and institution. Yeah, when you have any comment, also question and any other response to the, from the talk from the speaker, please do use the feature from slide.2 yeah, from this link yeah, and right there and I will, I or the committee will help you yeah, to show your question to the speakers yeah, and treat everyone how you would like to be treated. So, and we'll, gonna enjoy this lecture, but before I pass the time yeah, to our speakers, let me put in. 
Budian. Budian is our dean and she was here. And before your presentation, Sam, yeah, I would like to invite Budian to give an opening remark. Yeah, maybe. Budian. Budian. Committee. Is Budian here? Buana, I think Budian is getting trouble with the connection. And so we can yes. We can yes. continue with the presentation or waiting for Budian. Yes, we can just start the presentation. Okay, yeah. So I can say that Sam is a leading solar in the field of corporate governance, especially in banking area, in banking industry. And corporate governance is an endless topic. There are many, many available and opportunity to get explored on it. Yeah. So just like yeah, the topic that will be present will be presenting by our speakers today. So I will give the, the time to our speakers, Shams. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you, Anna. Can you please stop sharing so that I can yes. Wait. Yes. Wait. Yes. Okay. Can you see my slide? Yes. All right. So, uh, first of all, uh, thank you very much, uh, Anna, for your such a nice introduction, and of course for uh, this uh, invitation to talk to your uh, colleagues and your students. And my voice uh, is okay before I jump into my uh, detailed talk, Anna? Yeah, it is clear, but little bit echoing. Okay, I don't know why it is echoing. So uh, do you want me to use my headphone just to stop echoing? I think it's getting clear. Let me try my So let me try my headphone if it stops echoing, okay? Yeah, thank you. Is it better? Uh, yeah, far, far better now. Okay. Thank you. All right. Okay. So uh, again, uh, thank you to Anna and thank you for Badari Dinch for organizing uh, this talk. And let me introduce my other co-authors, Heiran Park from Korean University, myself, Shams Patan from Curtin University, and Alex Marwick, uh, who was our uh, honor student, he is now working at Deloitte, Australia. And this topic uh, is on the US market. I have got least idea about the Indonesian market, but uh, if you have any questions about uh, anything about this research, uh, please do uh, raise it through the way following the uh, your procedure. So, uh, Again, uh, this topic matches nicely for your purpose because uh, this is a blend between accounting and finance. Yes. So accounting comes in the form of transparency. As you can see that this topic is on bank transparency and finance. And I think the common ownership is common to uh, both finance and economics and accounting. So in a way, uh, I'm glad that I'm presenting at your place. And if you have any questions for clarifications or anything, please don't hesitate to ask me questions. So here you go. So this is a normal disclaimer uh, from Cardin University. And this is the outline for today's talk. So I will provide a brief background by way of uh, defining two of the important terms that you have seen in the title of the talk, that is the common ownership, that is this topic is about common ownership 
and bank transparency. So I will define in much more details of uh, these two terms. Then we'll talk about why uh, we have focused on uh, common ownership in banks. And then we will highlight some of the key theoretical aspects to establish an uh, association between common ownership and uh, bank transparency. Then we will talk about the uh, empirical setup uh, with preview of results. I guess. I guess. Uh, I will try to cover at least these four fast four points within my time. And if we have time, then I will show you the results. Otherwise, maybe my aim is to finish up to point four, that is showing you the results. And if we have the time, then definitely I'm going to uh, walk you through the uh, tables. So let's talk about what do we mean by the term common ownership. So here is the definitions and with an explained with an example from uh, the banking industry in the US. So a common owners are generally when an owners hold shares in multiple firms within the same industry. So say for example, uh, the BlackRock is an asset manager. It holds shares in both JP Morgan and Citigroup as you can see from the left panel of the screen. So BlackRock will be considered as a common owner for either JP Morgan or Citigroup. So they are two largest uh, banking in the US. And on the right-hand panel, uh, you will see that top three banks in the US and their uh, top six uh, shareholders, institutional shareholders. So what you can see from the right panel that JP Morgan, Bank of America, and Citigroup in all those three banks, uh, there are some institutional shareholders whose names are commonly appearing. Say, for example, BlackRock. BlackRock is appearing or remains the top uh, shareholders in all of these uh, three banks. And Vanguard, State Street, Fidelity. So they are the largest uh, initial shareholders. They hold shares across many banks within uh, the U US market. So in that sense, these, com uh, these shareholders can be uh, uh, defined as common shareholders or common owners. Now, the question is that why suddenly we have focused on, rather than looking into only institutional shareholders, or uh, individual shareholders or mutual funds, uh, not looking into those set of uh, type of shareholders, we are focusing on common shareholders. So uh, that is the reason because uh, it's been observed that over the time, this common shareholders concentration has increased significantly. I can give you a couple of statistics and I will also show in the next slide for our sample, this common ownership has increased significantly over the last at least one decade. So say, for example, the common ownership of the S&P 1500 firms in the US has increased from about 16% in 1992 to about 90% in 2019. So also you will see that the BlackRock and Vanguard remains the largest five shareholders of more than 53% of the universe of US farms. So that's why it is important for us to know the, the implications of such kind of common ownerships for various uh, farm decisions. But in our case, we will be looking into on the banks only, not non-banking institutions. So for our sample, what we see uh, that about in 1986, that's when our sample starts, there was almost no common owners. But as time progresses through the through uh, over the time, you'll see that the blue line, uh, the blue color shows the increase in the common ownerships. So common ownerships uh, turn to be 74% uh, or behind of our sample banks are now commonly held by industrial shareholders. So that's why you can see that their presence has become more dominant and it is important for us to know the, the behavior or the incentives of common share uh, common owners and the associated implications. So that's why that's motivated us to focus on common owners. Now, what about 
the transparency. So transparency is a broad term. That's why I try to provide a solid definitions from Robert Bushman, who is very much well known for research in uh, bank transparency. That is an accounting topic. He's an accounting professor from University of Kellogg, I guess. So he defines bank transparency as the availability of relevant and reliable information about the periodic performance, financial positions, business model, governance, and risk of banks to outside shareholders, outside uh, stakeholders. These outside stakeholders includes depositors, investors, borrowers, regulators, in, et cetera. So with this definition, you can, you can understand that the transparency is quite a broad term. So it, that's why you will find that in this paper, uh, very soon I will show you that I have major transparency covering different aspects of, uh, of, of the trans transparency. So now, uh, why we do particularly focus on bank transparency, not in performance or risk taking. Why particularly on transparency? Because uh, transparency is very critical for bank stability. Uh, the 2007, 2009 financial crisis, one of the reasons that's been identified is uh, lack of transparency has uh, facilitated the exorbitant risk taking. So it is important for us to uh, know that what constitute transparency. Also transparency uh, instill effective market discipline, the disciplining or the monitoring by the uh, uh, regulators, monitoring by the debt holders. So this all can be facilitated if banks are more transparent. Bank transparency adds to the bank value. It strengthens the corporate governance of the borrowers. It lessens bank panic and rollover risk. It reduces the cost of financing, and it also contributes to efficient allocation of capital and economic growth. So that's why, as you can see, that transparency is very much significant for proper functioning of the banks, as well as to maintain the financial stability. So it is important for us to rightly focus on bank transparency. Then, why we study transparency at banks in particular, again, uh, against all those explanations, uh, bank transparency, uh, we thought that it is to evaluate the importance or impact of common ownership. We have chosen bank transparency because, uh, as I've already mentioned, that the, the X, we have X and T reasons to uh, assume that the relationship between common ownership and transparency will be special at banks because of their unique features. As I've mentioned, that banks are particularly opaque, which provides opportunities for distorting financial statements, facilitates exorbitant risk taking, and hinders early detection of problems in banks. And also, regulations reduces the power of our empirical test. Hence, any statistical evidence that we might detect through our analysis will be more convincing as opposed to the evidence that we see uh, on non-banking studies. So whether transparency is also necessary conditions for bank stability, which is mostly debated, uh, we have shed some light on that aspect by showing that transparency basically reduces crash risk. So we are going to uh, look into all those aspects through our uh, journey in our empirical analysis. So this slide is about in one slide i have summarized the objective of this research and the key uh, key findings so that in case as i lost some of you along my uh, other details so you will have some basic understanding of this paper so this paper is about evaluating the nature of association between common ownership and bank transparency and our sample includes around 1,200 bank holding companies over the period between 1986 to 2018 with a total observations of 45,000 bank quarter observations. And our main result is bank transparency increases with common ownership. And we provide uh, three channels to explain our theoretical arguments. That is, uh, bank transparency uh, reduces private information, sorry, common ownership reduces private information gathering. 
it improves stock liquidity and it decreases managerial incentives. So these are three channels through which we have explained the positive association that is our main results between bank transparency and common ownership. And we have also shown one of the important implications which I've mentioned earlier, that is, uh, it is debated that whether transparency is, uh, is actually a contributing factor to the financial crisis. So we have shown that indeed, uh, farms, banks with high transfer uh, common ownership, they do reduce crash risk. So that is a, a important findings that we claim to show in through our, uh, through our, through our study. So this is basically in one slide the the whole thing about the uh, the, the 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 main main takeaway from from this study. Then I will spend some time, maybe five to ten minutes, to explain to you the underlying theory of common ownership, and then three important arguments, theoretical arguments to establish a, a negative association between common ownership and transparency. So the main theory based on which we, uh, we, we will start our conversation is the anti-competitive view of common ownership. This is a, a theory developed by industrial economics in, uh, in early 1970s. Uh, what is the anti-competitive theory of common ownership? The anti-competitive theory of common ownership explains that uh, when the, the objective of a farm is generally to maximize the value of the farm or the shareholders' wealth maximization, that is the key concept of uh, the, the major objective of financial manager. And that's what we teach as a financial academics in a Western economy, in a capitalist view, that a farm will run to maximize the share, um, value of the farm itself and it will automatically then maximize the value of the shareholders. But in presence of common owners, that is the one owner is holding shares in multiple farms with the same industry. What will happen? Then the objective is no longer to maximize the value of the farm itself, but the maximization of the wealth of the common hold owners who hold shares in multiple farms. So in that case, uh, it is not the maximization of the share uh, value of the uh, one farm, but reducing the cost uh, and reducing the competitions among the farm. And that's way to contribute the total portfolio value of the uh, common owners. So say for example, in a, in a competitive environment, generally a farm has to incur some type of proprietary cost. So what are the examples of those proprietary costs? Examples of those proprietary costs are patent races, uh, price undercutting, advertising war, and this cost basically reduces the total portfolio value of common owners because these are costs they need to incur to remain competitive in the farm. So if a common owners hold shares in multiple farm, then they don't need to compete with each other. So they can save money by reducing those costs to maximize the total value of the common shareholders. So that is what they're saying that the common owners have an incentives to reduce competition, that is anti-competitive behavior. So, to, so that the, ultimately they can benefit from this reduced cost. So that is the main idea of common owners because this has an important implications for the farm behavior. So farm behavior now could be quite different uh, for those who are owned by common owners compared to those who are not owned by common owners. So, and also the sources of benefit uh, for a common owners are that the there are certain actions of a particular farms uh, that has got negative externalities to the uh, PR or other farms within the same industry. So say for example, if the farm is not transparent, they are opaque, the, this has a negative impact on its PR farms in terms of low liquidity, stock liquidity, high cost of financing, and also inefficient investment. So now if they're commonly hold, then in absence of uh, that fear of uh, that the competitor may use the uh, critical information for their own benefit, those fear will be removed. And that's how the uh, when the farm is commonly owned, the 
in the, the, the firm may uh, internalize those externalities, the externalities which has initially been considered as a negative impact. Now this can be turned to be a positive one and adding value to the total portfolio value of the common ownership. So that is the core understanding or core theory uh, through which uh, we try to explain uh, our other arguments to establish a positive, uh, sorry, a negative association between uh, common owners and transparency. So here are the three arguments that we put forward uh, through the lens of anti-competitive argument of common owners. We argue that uh, commonly owned banks have incentives to disclose more information, that is to improve transparency because uh, common owners have been incentives to reduce proprietary cost. As I mentioned that proprietary costs are generally incurred to remain competitive in the market. So now, if they are owned by the same common owners, they don't need to worry about the competition. So they can save those extra costs, that is advertising costs or cost associated with the patent or price undercutting. And the second reason is, as I've mentioned, that in presence of competition, they have got negative externalities in front of in in, in terms of stock liquidity or uh, high cost of financing or inefficient investment. Now uh, they can they can turn this. Uh, negative externalities into positive externalities because if they provide more information that will increase the stock liquidity of the PR firms, improve the, uh, the, the uh, reduce the cost of financing and improve the investment efficiency of the PR or rival firms, that is the firms in within the same industry. And even though the firm itself is not benefiting, but the common shareholders benefited from, from, from those, uh, the trans, those actions of the PR firms. And third reason is that it, with a common ownership, uh, the, the, uh, the individual firms may enjoy the relationship lending because of the economics of a scale. So they now have got a few number of competitors within the firm and this is uh, conducive to uh, build up relationship with their customers and that helps if that helps the banks to uh, lend more money and large amount of money to the customers and that eventually is good for uh, information sharing so based on these three strong arguments we have got x anti uh, reasoning uh, to assume that the uh, common bank transparency would increase with common ownership that means that the greater the common ownership the higher will be the transparency of bank. Uh, that is our core assumptions or hypothesis. And we will uh, see through, uh, already you know that through our empirical analysis with, uh, with a bunch of robustness tests, we have substantiated that, uh, that hypothesis. So now moving to the uh, second big part of my talk, that is uh, introducing you the empirical setting and then also introducing the key uh, variables. So here we go, we'll talk about the data sample, three proxies for transparency and seven different proxies for common ownership. And we'll talk about our uh, empirical identification or estimation methods. Then we'll talk about our key findings. I have already mentioned that um, our sample includes around 1200 banks, between 1986 to 2018 with the 45,000 bank water observations. And the sources of information are quite a standard source. For example, the ownership's information are from uh, 13F, uh, 13F Thomson Reuters, financial statements, that is accounting information publicly available from FRY9C, uh, from Federal, uh, Federal Reserve Chicago and CompuStat, market data from CRSP, and we have used the PAMCO RSD just to match the data from different databases. So here are the three important, this is more uh, important for you because if you're from accounting discipline, uh, I think that this is at the core of uh, at the accounting research. So we have got three 
different measures of transparency. First one is earnings management, which is estimated through discretionary loan loss provisions. So similar to Kothari uh, or Dichau's model in non-banking finance. So it is the residuals that is used uh, or extracted from a model, loan loss provision model, following BTN Liao Journal of Accounting and Economics 2014 model, where the loan loss provision is uh, run against a bunch of determinants, such as like the non-performing loan, uh, lead and lags of non-performing loan, net charge off uh, and bank size, uh, changes in the loan, and also controlling for some macroeconomic variables. So after running this regression, what is unexplained as demonstrated through the residuals, that is we called is as a discretionary loan loss provision. So this is one of the important measures of bank transparency. The higher or the larger the uh, residuals or loan loss uh, discretionary loan loss provisions, you can take this as bank is less transparent. The smaller the amount, the higher the predictability of the loan loss provisions, it indicates that the bank transparency is higher with the smaller amount. And the second measure is bond index of credibility, which is following Bonsa, Leon, and Miller J Journal of Accounting and Economics 2017 paper. What it measures, it measures how easily the financial statements of a bank or a firm can be readable. So using a set of uh, dictionary terms, they have created through a software style master, I guess that is the name of the software, to identify that how many words that is uh, cannot be easily readable or less frequently used. So higher the, the that index is, that means that it is very uh, challenging for an individual to understand or read the financial statements. So that is what bog index of readability is. And the third one is comparability of the financial statements. That is how the statements of one firm or one bank can be comparable with the financial statements of the other banks. So here, uh, the economic intuitions of creating this third variable is uh, how the return of one firm in a particular time period can be explained by the accounting return. Stock return can stock return of one firm can be explained by the accounting return of the another firm. So the, the, the larger the coefficient of that associations between stock return and the uh, accounting return for a pair of firms, then you can say that they are highly comparable. So based on these intuitions, uh, running a different uh, the pairs of regressions uh, among the firms within our sample, we have created that comparability index. So the larger the index, the higher the comparability or the transparency of that particular banks. So that's how uh, we have used three different measures of bank transparency. I hope it, it makes sense to you. Then we have used seven, seven different measures of common owners. I will not get in details, but this uh, table in this slide uh, introduced the seven different measures because uh, common ownerships and its anti-competitive behavior, uh, the literature is still building up on the fact that they, they don't agree that what particular measures uh, specially or perfectly captures the anti-competitive behavior of common owners. That's why the literature is still growing. And that's why we have provided the robustness of our check for seven different majors. Say, for example, the first one is co-bank, CEO bank, which stands for the number of banks commonly owned by institutional block holders, CEO in, that is the number of common institutional block holders. These are simple majors. And whereas the more sophisticated or uh, model-based majors are CEO weight and CEO Google, sorry, CEO GGL. So CEO weight, is the, the average value of the structural weights that a bank puts on the profits of other commonly owned banks relative to its own profit. So that is the source of anti-competitive, which is more competitionally intensive. And our measure of COGGL, which is basically a measures, uh, 
estimated following uh, the process uh, suggested by Gile, Gormley and Levitt's 2020 papers. And this is also computationally more intensive. And the last one is a co-dummy, which is a very simplistic measure, a dummy variable that equals one if the bank has at least one common initial shareholders. So these are the seven different measures of our common ownership. And we show our results. All the results are robust for each of these seven different measures. So you'll see uh, these results very soon when I will show you the results through our different tab tabulation of those estimates. So this is our uh, general generic specifications of the model, structural model. That is why IIT is a proxy for uh, three different measures of transparency and also the different channels and common ownerships are the seven different measures of uh, common ownership. Uh, X is a vector of uh, six, uh, four covariates. Four covariates are, that is the control, controlling for bank size, charter value, which is a concept similar to Tobin's Q. That is a ratio between uh, market value of equity to book value of equity, non-interest income to capture the uh, revenue diversification uh, intensity and the revenue growth that is the uh, changes in the revenue over the time. And we have control for bank fixed effect, time fixed effects. So this is our generic model. And then moving to our more uh, specific or powerful identifications to remove the endogeneity concern. That is the concern that the nature of association is not running from uh, common ownership to transparency, rather it's the other way around, that is the reverse causality. So to improve on our causal identification, we have uh, adapted two alternative or powerful measures, that is difference and difference uh, measures, that is a natural uh, experiment using quasi-natural shock to our main variable that is common ownership from the mergers between BlackRock and Barclays Global Investors in 2009. The results are reported in table four, and I will show you the results if we have the time. And the second estimation techniques we have used to uh, improve on our endogeneity concern, which is the two-stage least squares with an instrumental variable. Here, the instrumental is the Russell 2000 index inclusions. And our results are robust to these two more powerful estimation methods. And of course, uh, to uh, remove the concern of measurement errors, we have seven different measures of common ownership, uh, three different measures of transparency, et cetera. Okay, so these are our main estimation techniques to note, to, to, uh, to, to inform you. Now, here are the preview of our uh, results. And these are also highlights the contributions of this uh, paper because these results are quite noble. So our main results for common ownership, what do we see? We find that bank transparency increases with common ownership. So you will find these results in the table three if we have got that paper. Other, otherwise, I will show the results on the table very soon. And we have shown three different channels that explains the positive effect of common owners on transparency. So that is, we find a negative association between private information gathering. Here our three different proxies of private information gathering is idiosyncratic volatility, LMSWC2, this is, uh, stands for uh, Laurenti, Michaeli, uh, Sars and Wang's uh, coefficient two, and P stands for probability of informed trading. I'm going to talk more on this one in the, in the relevant slides. And these are, again, uh, this literature is mainly derived from accounting literature. Then we find that the, uh, the common owners positively impact the stock liquidity and stock liquidity is measured through three different proxies, uh, stock turnover, dollar volume, and bid ask spread. These definitions are will be shown very soon. And we have shown that the manager incentives as proxies through Delta and Vega, Delta measures the pay performance sensitivity and Vega measures the pay risk sensitivity of the CEO compensation. We show that material incentives reduces with common ownerships. And these are considered, and th these uh, variables are derived or sourced based on the theoretical, uh, theoretical uh, platforms based on which we have established a negative association, uh, oh, sorry, a positive association between bank transparency and common ownership. 
And finally, one of the important economic implications is that uh, bank transparency reduces crash risk because crash risk is uh, argued to increase if the transparency is low. So if the transparency of a firm is low, then at some point, all the bad news will be revealed at once and that will ultimately crash the stock price. So based on this one, it has got direct implications of transparency. We have shown that indeed aligned with our argument. If the common ownership improve the transparency, then that will reduce the probability of crash risk. And again, crash risk is proxy through uh, two, at least two alternatives. Commonly, of course, these are common, uh, common alternatives uh, in light of the literature on, uh, we have got a separate literature on crash risk. So this is the results. And now I'm going to walk you through for the, given the remaining time period that you will allow me, I will show you the results in table. So here are the tables. So this is the first table. That is the summary statistics. I don't think that I have much things to explain from this table, but table three, which is our main table, uh, which shows that the uh, panel A is for uh, banks discretionary loan loss provision. As you can see that all each of the proxies, seven different proxies of common ownerships, the coefficient is negative. And in terms of the economic magnitude, it explains that one standard deviation increase in discretionary loan loss provision, sorry, one standard deviation increase in common ownership uh, reduces uh, bank transparency, uh, sorry, reduces discretionary loan loss provision between 5% to 10%. So when we say that decreases discretionary loan loss provision, that means that it improves transparency because uh, loan loss provisions, discretionary loan loss provision, the higher the loan loss provisions, uh, uh, DLLP, the lower the transparency. So the negative means that it is good for the bank. So improvement in common ownership basically improves banks' transparency by way of decreasing discretionary loan loss provisions between a range between 5% to 9%. And then the second alternative is uh, our, our, our results are robust to second alternative of transparency that is BOG index, BOG index of readability. And it, the coefficient is also negative because the higher or the larger the BOG index, that means that the financial statements are less readable. So we expect a negative value is good because it improves the readability. So common ownership improves the readability of the trans, uh, of, of, of the financial statements. And the third proxy of transparency is uh, the comparability of the financial statements. So here, the larger the value of that comparability index, the greater the financial statements uh, uh, comparability, so which is good. So our uh, the coefficient sign is negative, sorry, positive and statistically significant across all seven different proxies of trans, uh, common ownership. So it also indicates that the uh, the financial statements comparability improves with more common ownership of a particular bank. So we have shown strongly that for three different transparency proxies and across seven different common ownership proxies, we have presented that uh, common ownership indeed improves bank transparency. This is our headline results. And now I'm going to walk you through uh, two other alternative uh, robustness tests to improve transparency. As I've mentioned that uh, we, the first one is difference in difference based on the mergers of BlackRock and BGI in 2007. So here the treatment groups are those banks for which there is an in, increase in uh, common ownership following the merger in 2009 and post is the time period after 2009. So we expect that this interaction term should be negative for DLLP, for, uh, negative for BOG index and positive for uh, comparability index. And that's what exactly we have sh shown through this DID type of analysis. And that substantiate that our results are, uh, are uh, immune to any endogeneity concern. Our second estimation technique is two stage D squares. Uh, and this this uh, slice is basically showing that diagnostic statistics, that is the uh, post merger period, that is the the increase in actually exogenously common ownership increases following the merger. That was the panel B showing 
because we claim that the margins between BlackRock and BGI Barclays Global Investors increases the common ownership. That's what it is showing. That is, uh, the the after the merger, there is a significant increase in common ownership, and the panel last panel that is showing that parallel trend as may the groups are insignificant before the merger so that meets the parallel trend assumption so these diagnostic statistics just to uh, demonstrate that our did settings are uh, quite a strong one so it satisfies the the preconditions uh, to to rely on the our headline results then uh, we show that two stage least squares where the instrument is uh, Russell 2000 index inclusions and uh, the first stage regressions are not shown here it is in the appendix we have shown just the second stage uh, uh, second stage regressions where you can see that the predicted values of our common ownership based on the first stage regressions aligns or similar to our main results as reported in table three that is the coefficients on uh, common ownership for dllp is negative for bog index is negative and common uh, comparability index is positive and this is robust across seven different measures of uh, common ownership so that is uh, our main results substantiated through different estimation techniques to remove the energetic concern and here uh the these results are for three different channels so anna do i have the time to go through the different channels or how much time that we have left for you can go through sams yeah you okay, still have right. some time yes okay stop me when you want me uh, when i'm run out sure, of my time sure. okay yes Sure. So this is the first channel that is the private information gathering. So private information gathering explains that the main theory in accounting literature shows that uh, explains that uh, so far what we have explained is based on public information. So private information is that information which is uniquely available not to the public but to the private units. So if the transparency is better, then we expect that the private information will be lower. So in that sense, if transparent uh, common ownership improves, improves information environment, then that will reduce the incentives to gather private information. So that is the main underlying theoretical argument. And we have proxied or used three different measures of private information. First one is idiosyncratic volatility, which is a concept similar to synchronicity, if you're familiar with the literature on synchronicity. So this is a concept that is that reciprocal of the synchronicity is the idiosyncratic volatility, where it is uh, estimated through running a regression of stock return against the market return and industry return, uh, and then at extract the R square and using this formula to that is the log of one minus R square from this regression divided by the R square to construct the idiosyncratic volatility. And the second measure is based on uh, Lauren T. Michael e. Sar and Wang's procedure. Uh, that is why it is named as NSW C2. And what we do, we run the stock return of each banks against its lag value and a product of lagged return times the volume that is the stock turnover. And we take the coefficient of this interaction term as a measure of uh, private information gathering. And the last one is probability of informed trading, which explains or refers to the, uh, the, the likelihood that a trade originates more likely from a privately informed trader. So we have not calculated it by ourselves, rather we have uh, matched the data from Stephen Brown who has generously provided, uh, estimated that measure and provided that measures for banks along with some other non-bank firms. We have just simply matched it for our sample. So these are the three important measures of private information gathering. And here are our main results. So for idiosyncratic volatility, we, that is our first measure, 
you can see that the coefficient for each of these seven different proxies of common ownership is negative. That's what we have expected. That is, uh, the larger the common ownership, the lower will be the private information gathering because in presence of more transparency, the, the dependence of, on private information gathering will be low. So we find support to this conjecture and that's what you can see from this table. And this result is uh, similar for if for our two other alternative proxies of information private information gathering that is lmswc2 and probability of informed trading so private information gathering decreases with common ownership then we move on to our second channel of uh, transparency that is uh, i'm not going to uh, uh, i can easily skip the results for uh, second alternative of private information gathering and third alternative of private information gathering because the results remain the same, interpretation is the same. Then the second channel is stock liquidity. Here we have uh, three different proxies of stock liquidity. Uh, the argument is that in presence of uh, transparency, stock liquidity uh, will facilitate transparency uh, and it will also allow the banks to save uh, in terms of uh, financing uh, financing, and it facilitates governance. That's why we expect the common ownerships improve stock liquidity. And we have got three different proxies of stock liquidity. First one is turnover. That is the daily trading volume divided by the outstanding shares average, dollar volume, the daily trading volume multiplied by the uh, closing price averaged over the quarter and bid ask spread. That is the daily closing ask price less the closing bid price divided by the midpoint of the closing ask and bid price averaged over the quarter. These are the standard measures of stock liquidity. Nothing new. These are based on the uh, literature on the stock liquidity. And what do we find? Already you know that we find that stock liquidity increases with common ownership. That's what our first measure of stock liquidity is uh, turnover. And we find that uh, each of the coefficients on seven different proxies of common ownership is positive and statistically significant, except for the last one. So the results are similar for dollar volume and bid spread, so that I can easily skip the next two slides because these results are for two other alternative measures. So we prove that stock liquidity is our another channel to explain the positive association between uh, transparency and common ownership. So I can easily skip these two other uh, these two slides and moving on to our third channel that is managerial incentives. So here the argument is that uh, Al Anton Federer, Anton Federer, Jean, and Smells have got a paper published, uh, working paper, uh, which argues that managerial incentives is one of the costs that firm has to incur to remain competitive in the market. So what does it mean? It means that you have to provide enough incentives in terms of compensation to your managers, that is CEO, so that the CEO will work harder uh, to produce more, and this will make them remain competitive in the market. Now, with the common owners, as I have already mentioned, that you don't have to worry about the competition. So if you don't have to worry about the competition, then you can save money by paying less to your CEO. That's why you expect that manager incentives will be low with high common ownership. Here we have used two measures of common manager incentives. One is Delta, another is Vega. What is Delta? Delta measures changes in CEO's total pay for a percentage change in the stock price following Cole's, Daniel, and Navin's work. Similarly, Vega measures changes in CEO's total pay for a changes in annualized standard deviation of stock return. So of course, the higher Delta or Vega refers to high managerial incentives, and we expect them to be negatively associated with common ownership. And that's what in this slide, you see that the coefficient on our seven different proxies, six out of seven different proxies are negative for Delta. That's why uh, we, our, our, our arguments, our expectations are quite substantiated and substantiating the anti-competitive view through which we have developed this uh, association or explained these results. That is the results between or the association between common owners and transparency. So this result for Delta is also robust for Vega. 
that is uh, six out of the seven different common ownership proxies are, remains uh, negative. So we substantiate that our results, uh, three different channels to explain the positive association between common ownership and bank transparency. One is private information gathering. Second one is stock liquidity. And third one is manager incentives. And the last result that I'm going to talk to you about is that one of the important implications of transparency, that is the crash risk. And we have got two different measures of crash risk, that is NC skew and due volatility. These are standard measures. And NC skew is measured as the ratio of negative of the third moment for bank ice weekly stock returns to the standard deviation of bank's ice weekly stock returns raised to the power of three and du that is down and up volatility which is the natural logarithmic of the ratio of standard deviations of the down and up weeks a down or up week for a bank i is the week with bank ice weekly stock returns lower or greater than quarterly mean again these are standard measures and our we expect the coefficient for common ownership should be negative where the nc skew and due volatility are uh, dependent variables and that's what exactly you find that the coefficient on common ownership is negative where the dependent variable is nc skew and that indicates that the banks with greater common ownership basically experience less crash risk and the results are similar for du volatility. So crash risk decreases with common ownership. So this results is robust to du volatility. So this is the final slide. Just to confirm my discussions, uh, what do we know? What do we get? So we find that common ownership is competitions, which results in increased bank transparency owing to reduce property costs, internalizing the externalities and enhanced relationship lending. Although our results are in line with anti-competitive view of common ownership, but presenting some bright side of this product market concentration, our findings have far reaching policy implications for bank regulators. How? Bank regulators should emphasize that banks estimates of loan loss provision should be forward looking and reflect a broader range of valuable, available credit information and accounting standard setters such as the financial accounting standard boards and the international accounting standard board should consider standards that enhance the readability and comparability of financial statements and it emphasized the importance of testing industrial economic theory also for financial firms so that concludes to my presentation i will leave it to you to answer to any of your questions i'll stop sharing as well so that i can see you Thank you so much for your very comprehensive talk here today, Sam. Yeah, and currently we only we we have had one question, and it is like from persons from. Sorry, maybe. I cannot hear anything, uh, uh, Ratna. Or, yeah, the... clearly? Yeah, I can see, I can, I can hear now. Oh, yeah, yeah. The, the question is from someone yeah, that previously were, worked in the government financial service authority yeah he or she asks you yeah so the the case is something like this when hen, when she or he uh, handling merger and acquisition yeah some approval or yeah before they approve yeah it usually will be ensured that the other bank that the investor or either institutional or individual has is in good condition so if for example pet blackrock you know, wanted to buy some stocks yeah, in indonesian bank for example yeah and blackrock already had other shares of other banks yeah mm -hmm. so the authority wanted to know yeah if the other bank yeah already had by the investor is in good or not yeah but the risk of economic crisis, of financial crisis in the bank industry still exists. What I wanted to ask is whether common ownership not increasing the risk if the banking industry crisis happened. 
how do you think yeah, about the risk, yeah, financial risk or crisis risk? Yeah. Okay. With the... uh, I think that this is the fantastic questions because uh, you have rightly uh, pointed to one of the important uh, regulatory implications that we are trying to address or provide yeah. some light on uh, uh, what, what should be the case of in case of allowing a one banks with margin with another banks whether yes. providing a favorable or unfavorable view so look uh, as you can see that common owners are anti-competitive right yes. and regulators generally don't prefer anti-competitive environment that's why in australia we have got four pillar policy where they don't allow the banks to merge with one another so uh, this is a very very uh, important thing. But we don't have any direct uh, silver bullet or silver answers to these questions. What we try to do is to provide some understanding of how the behavior of the common ownership. Then the regulators can uh, evaluate the different benefits of the common ownerships and at the same time the cost of the common ownership and make a call. Just to be more specific, uh, context, giving to, to give you more specific context to your questions, that is how the common ownership affect the systematic risk. So still our understanding on this one is far from complete because of some papers say that the common ownership increase the systematic risk or another set of literature says that the common ownership reduce the systematic risk. So the literature is not settled on how the common owners contribute to the systematic risk, which is quite important for regulators to answer. But what we see that common owners improve transparency and transparency is conducive for uh, reducing risk taking. So in that sense, the regulators should encourage more transparency. Now, if that is the case, then mergers between two companies with common owners, uh, then it could be encouraged because that will improve uh, common ownership or the incentives of the common owners. But again, uh, that may also expose them to large systematic risk because of the too big to fail policy or the incentives of the banks. So in a nutshell, there is no clear cut answers, but you have, you have touched on a very important questions. And uh, this is the type of questions through, uh, to which we wanted to shed some light. But uh, uh, unfortunately, I don't have any uh, the yes or no answers to these questions. OK, yeah. but I've taken note out of this question. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, can can I ask yeah, or discuss your, yeah, from your talk yeah, before, yeah, I, I, yeah, present this, yeah, talk, yeah, I already yeah, thinking, yeah, that what I'm thinking is the one, yeah, similar in Azar and AST 2018, yeah, from Journal of Finance, yeah, you say it, yeah, it's the opposite, opposite hypothesis from yours, yeah. Mm -hmm. AST 28, yeah. What I'm thinking is, yeah, what, yeah, what is the effect, yeah, of common ownership in the, yeah, like the benefit or disadvantage, yeah, for the cost customer, yeah, because yeah, in the initial paper AST 2018, yeah, they do the conduct the research yeah, in airline industry mm -hmm. and the effect of common ownership yeah, on customer is negative. Yeah. It, yeah, it says that yeah, the price will be yeah, increase yeah, with the common ownership. And this is the idea that I see is in like regular or normal industrial organization theory that yeah, when concentration of the market is increased yeah, and the, the firms yeah, tend to be yeah, like doing collusion and the price to customer will be increased. Yeah, what I'm thinking is yeah, something like that. So in terms, yeah, even though the common ownership yeah, has a bright side yeah, in terms of bank transparency, mm -hmm. how will be with 
the customers yeah, in the cost of debt or you already mentioned something cost of financing yeah but i'm not clear yeah in terms of the like common common firms yeah or only firms that related to the co yeah i think that that's uh... it. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Ratna. You, it is a very uh, important questions, and then uh, I don't know the name of the uh, 2018 papers. Can you please send me the papers? But what you say that uh, farms with more common ownerships they do undertake less CSR, right? So that's what that papers main takeaway, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so... you write it in section two, section okay. two of your presentation. Reduce okay. incentive to compete, yeah, based on Azar, Smalls, and Taiku, Journal of Finance 2018. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So uh, good that you have mentioned this to me because this morning, as I was getting myself prepared for, for this talk, I discovered one more paper published in uh, not in finance or accounting journal, but in uh, organizational uh, mm. science, that yeah, is the yeah, management yeah. journal. Yeah. So why? what they have shown they have shown that that farms with more common ownerships do undertake more csr oh. so they, <laughs> not less csr and their argument is based on the idea that uh, when farms are hold by more common ownership that expose them more to the systematic risk and i don't know i have not read the whole paper which theory or empirical evidence uh, allow them to uh, settle on these uh, presumptions to argue that if farms are exposed to more systematic risk, then they do undertake more CSR to hold loyal Legitimate. customers. Yes. Low, uh, low, uh, the loyal customers to survive through that systematic risk. So that is that paper is about this is an A star journal, top one of the top uh, management journal. So again, as you can see that the 2018 paper asked for negative, but 2019 paper or 2021 yeah. paper asked for a positive. So yeah, there's a mix of evidence and yeah. easy, easily argue in both ways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's very interesting, yeah, Sam's here. Any other question from audience? Let me check the, oh, this one, another one, this one. In Indonesia, can I only read it, Sam? Sure, sure. Yeah. In Indonesia alone, there is not much common ownership in banks, although some banks already have common ownership. What I want to ask is whether the banks that have the same common ownership also have the same transparency. For example, JP Morgan and... CP, yeah, who owned by BlackRock, yeah. The transparency of the two banks are equal, similar, or yeah. the same transparency between banks owned by common ownership. Uh, I am not sure if I get this question right. Can you please re uh, read that again for me, please, Anna? Yeah. yeah. whether the bank that have the same common ownership also have the same transparency okay so uh, we have measured the average effect uh, from uh, our regression analysis so uh, whether they have got the same level of transparency with the same level of ownership uh, we can easily answer if we look into the individual level of the banks, but unfortunately, I don't have that results with me. So uh, as I mentioned that we measure the average effect. So banks with more common ownership has got more transparency, but at the level of transparency and the level of uh, common ownership, that's, I have I cannot tell you on top of my head, but yeah. of course the data has got that information if I do look into individual banks. Yeah. And in into in a very like intuitive one, yeah, it is yeah. Can we say that yeah, when the banks owned by common ownership, they also have like similar or transparency like that? Uh, because, yeah, yeah. Uh, intuitively, they uh, they sh so on an average they should if they are if they commonly own, uh, they should have uh, improved transparency. 
intuitively of course uh, that is the main 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 findings of this 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 study okay yeah yeah, yeah. we can we can say wrongly yeah. something like that yeah. yes yeah yeah and other we do not have any question from the platform from the slido and maybe i can ask the other yeah. sure yeah directly from the audience yeah if any of you would like to ask yeah or make some confirmation or ask further yeah from the talk you can raise your hand I see yeah, from the audience list, yeah, Professor David Gilchrist. Good afternoon, David. How are you? Professor David Gilchrist. I'm, I'm good, thank you. Sorry, yeah. I was on mute and I was just trying to uh, work it out. Um, I'm yeah. very well, thank you. How are you? Yeah, good. Thank you, David. That's yeah. good. An David interesting is, paper. I enjoyed yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. David is from UWA. Yeah. Absolutely, it, just yeah. down the road. Yeah. Yeah, I know David by his name, but I've not met him before. I know uh, from Danes that he has got a couple of papers with David. So that's why I know. Good to see you, David. Absolutely. <laughs> Likewise, a fantastic paper, really interesting. Well done. <laughs> Thank yeah. you very much, David. Yeah, yeah. we must meet um, given we're so close. Yes, we should. We should. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Anna. Yeah. Thank you, David. Yeah. From audience, let me check. Nothing, yeah, nothing more we have here yeah, for the questions. Yeah, committee, there is no other questions for the speaker. Oh, this one is from the committee. Dear all to participants, yeah, please do fill the link yeah, in the chat room. Yeah. It's about the response, yeah, response questionnaire for, for this guest lecture. Yeah. And there is no more question, yeah. If we do not have any question, yeah, can we conclude our guest lecture today? Sure, Miss Wen. Oh yeah, yeah. So thank you so much yeah, for your presentation today. Very comprehensive, yeah. And yeah, I think this kind of yeah one or sub yeah sub field yeah sub area of corporate governance that's i think it's still yeah very very yeah great opportunity to explore yeah and we do not you yeah, give very little attention yeah especially in indonesia about this yeah common ownership yeah so thank you to share on this slide to us yeah and for professor david Chris. Thank you, David, for your atten attending this lecture today. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah. And thank you to all the participants. Yeah. And if we do not have any, any more to discuss, yeah, I can conclude our guest lecture today. And thank you to everyone of you. And have a very great afternoon. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, thank you, Anna. Anna. Well done yeah. again, champs. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Th Thank you, David. See ya. Bye bye. Bye bye. Shams. Yep. Sorry. Yeah, can, yeah. Are you sure that you yeah didn't yeah didn't get my this one the paper you mentioned in section two of your presentation the other. Okay, just hold for a second. Uh, yeah. Azar, so, Smalls, and Taku. Yes, yes, yeah. uh, yes. So they have, uh, yeah, yeah. So Azar, Smalls, and Taku, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That one, yeah. I have, 
yeah, similar thought with them. Yeah, that yeah, when common ownership yeah has like very like significant yeah, yeah. ownership in the market. Yeah, I think that yeah the like anti-competitive behavior yeah will increase yeah just like collusion yep. Yep. yeah and also fixing price something like that that what yeah i'm thinking yeah so yeah so, the implication is in the cost of debt yeah. yes okay all right so uh let me think so i don't think that anyone has only uh, one paper looked into bank uh, cost of financing but i don't see that any paper has actually looked into the cost of debt so if you wanted to look into the cost of debt that that is fine in the us market or in the indonesian market i'm not sure because yeah usually yeah, it is very hard to have the like the yeah, individual account of yeah price ownership. of yeah, no 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 the ownership but, but the cost of debt yeah, in individual account is very yeah. look uh there are you know that in the literature there are definitely many different measures that you can use in cost of financing cost of equity cost of debt the accounting information right so rather than using the market information accounting informations will be enough for you to calculate the cost of debt or cost of equity right okay. the challenges is generally uh, help, uh identifying or mapping the common ownership so if you have got a rich set of data from the uh, Indonesian market, yes, yes, then yes. then that could be a very good good work. Just as one of the main first comments from your audience was that uh, what is the regulatory implication? So mm -hmm. I think that regulators uh, in the Indonesian wants to know that how the common owners uh, behave in a particular market. So if you have got access to the common ownership data, then uh, I think that uh, that that is a quite interesting topic. Uh, yeah, maybe I can discuss with you yeah, later. Yeah. Sure. Uh, look, yeah, uh, if you have got any, if you or your colleague has got any idea or any, any yes. want my advice or any support in any capacity, I'm totally available. Okay. Just. just yeah, thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, thank you email, so much. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much, Sam. Yeah. <laughs> Looking forward to see you in person, maybe in Indonesia yeah. next time. Yeah. Good luck. And then if you're traveling back to uh, Perth, Perth do, yes. uh, me, we'll be happy to catch up. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank yeah. you so much. Yeah. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye.